Thank you, Sue, very much. And I'm really delighted to be here. Uh, Glasgow is one of my favourite cities, and it's so dynamic, and I have a, a, a nice history and memories of attending one or two Friday events myself in my 20s here, so it's rather daunting to now be in this position. Uh, not buoyed up by a, a bottle of whiskey, I hasten to add, as a couple of the speakers were uh, in the early 90s. But uh, thank you very much for, for this invitation. I am, uh, as I say, delighted to be here and particularly grateful for Tara and Sue's incredible hospitality over the last uh, couple of days. And I may be with you for longer uh, due to the snow over the weekend, so if anyone's got a couch I could kip on, I'd be most grateful. <laughs> Now, for some time, uh, I've been intrigued by this term, situation. I'd say for its capacity uh, to capture the presentness, if you like, of the moment of an encounter with an artwork, the ground of its making, an artwork's making, the spatial and temporal architecture, if you like, through which a work is produced and through which we come to experience it. Context for me by comparison is rather descriptive term, or rather illustrative, rather boring, pedestrian if you like. Uh, and somehow it's less active than this term, situation. But I have questions of this term and how useful it is to understand the moments and what has been termed the long durée through which artists work. How does this term situation, rather than sight, help us to understand what is at stake in the commissioning and production of contemporary art? What kinds of situations are produced by artworks? And I'm specifically interested in, I would say, those artworks that come to be experienced outside of conventional art contexts, such as museum or gallery, but which might be generated from them. And I'm particularly interested in those works which seem to be produced or commissioned in response to specific contexts outside the studio, the conventional artist studio. But I want to start with this interrogation of this term, situation, with a work that's bothered me over the last year, year and a half or so. I always think it's good to return to works that, that bother you in some, some way, that trouble you, as a way of navigating through some of these issues. And it's a work that was produced in November 2007. It was uh, a facet of this work is a two and a half minute tra film trailer featuring the British film actor Jude Law, which was screened across cinemas and on YouTube. And I'm just going to show it to you now. Thanks. What have you got that's uh, nice and fresh? Some nice sea bucks over here. Two, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's good news. Yeah, well, everyone's really excited to, uh, to get you back on the board. Yeah. I was surrounded by a cloud of flame. Yes. I mean, look, we were going to sort out a few uh, bits and pieces, but to be honest, um, more or less done. But soon I realised that, in fact, the fire burned within me. I was seized with joy and experienced illumination beyond description. Be a bit of time, I could feel that the universe was not made of dead matter, but was a living presence. I felt eternal life within me and saw that all people were immortal and that the cosmic order makes all things work toward the common good. understood that the basic principle of the world is what we call love and that in the long run we can all be sure of happiness
Okay, so that film trailer was directed by Jason Martin, and it was a trailer for an enactment of the same sequence of events by the same actors in real time on the 30th November at 11.30 at Borough Market. So the same woman with the red berry, the same orange being dropped down, and Jude Law buying his piece of fish. Um, Borough Market, for those of you who don't know, is a fashionable food market in Southwark, uh, close to Tate Modern. And the trailer was a component of this work by Pavel Artama entitled Real Time Movie and uses the conventions of cinema, if you like, to draw attention to an event in the future. Uh, it directs you to experience and to become part of an event, to attend to this event going on at Borough Market. And I'd say in the absence of any dramatic action, uh, it also suggests that the dr drama in itself is about to occur on the 30th of November. Uh, in the future, or in our case, that it's happened in the past. Now, not surprisingly, Jude Law's presence on the day attracted huge crowds. So this is the 30th of November at 11.30. So that the subtleties and the quietness and the cinematic quality of the borough market of the trailer were rep replaced by this frenzy of cameras, bodyguards, and jostling celebrity watchers. Now, for me, the work sets up these immediate questions. Where is the real time of the work? Is it the moment that you're watching YouTube or sitting in the cinema experiencing the trailer? Is it your anticipation of the event, that time of anticipation between presentness and the future? Is it the moment of recognizing that it could never be what it was in the trailer in the past? Where is the situation of the work? Is it in the promise of the event, in the promise, in this case, of celebrity? And then there's that word experience. If we go back to, I don't know if you can just see that, it says, come see, experience, real-time movie. That word experience, what did the experience of this work actually constitute? Now, it was commissioned for the exhibition The World as a Stage at Tate Modern an exhibition which sought to bring the realm of performance into dialogue with, gal with gallery-based work. And this work clearly forms part of Pavel Althammer's ongoing film project. Now, this project began in 2000, then titled Motion Picture, in Ljubljana for the Madic nomadic European Biennial Manifesto III. It, this time, when it was first staged, it was staged for a public location, and this version of the work deployed 11 stage and screen actors who spent 30 minutes seamlessly playing the roles of various urban dwellers, a tourist, a pair of lovers, a skateboarder, etc. Now, because of its sort of quasi-clandestine nature, the actors were unannounced and left without even acknowledging there had been a performance. And the work, in fact, provoked onlookers to ask each other and to non-participants whether actually they were part of the work or not. The performance was filmed and shown as a trailer as part of the exhibition, Manifesto 3. And in 2004, Althammer restaged the performance and a 90-second film trailer for the Carnegie International in Pittsburgh, where it was compared to a kind of photorealist painting. Now, in that sense, these kinds of ways in which the actors were not identified was almost as if you were stepping into a kind of Truman Show moment of reality that was being created for you. But noticeably, unlike a performance, this was unannounced, an unannounced work that seemed to blend with the everyday, as opposed to a real-time movie, which seemed to me to do exactly the opposite. Now, in hearing about the inclusion of Jude Law and on seeing this kind of very sleek cinematic trailer emphasizing a single event, I wondered whether the integrity, the sort of unannounced quality of the former manifestations of film had been lost. And here you'll see, for example, that Jude Law and the artist's names are set side by side, as if both authoring the work somehow. So did Althammer sell out? Did the fact that Tate commissioned this work mean that inevitably the experimental and invisible qualities of the work were lost? 